that there's an eternal hell, and especially young people, but really anyone. So why do you think the Bible is true, even though that there were other religions before the Bible and Christianity? And uh, what, because what God, just, God revealed it to me. God revealed it to yeah, you? Through the Bible. So he's, he's the all-knowing, all-powerful uh, being. So, And he's my source of truth. What's your source of truth? How do, how do you know what's true and real? From what I see and observe. I see and observe. So, so you know so you know, all the truth that you know is just the things that you can see. So you, do you only believe in things that you can see? No, I know that there's some things out there that I can't see, but I probably still believe those yeah. just because... To me, it makes logical sense. Yeah, so you can't see your mind, you can't see love, you can't see the wind. There's a lot of things you can't see. I can you, feel those things, though. Yeah, but you can't see them. So how do you know there's, like, you can see the effects and feel the effects of wind, but how do you know it's there? Because it's it's invisible. So is it the same you, for you with God, where you can feel God but you can't see God? It's not about feeling God. It, it, it doesn't the, exist. The, the, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good, if you just continue to say that God doesn't exist, you can justify pretty much any sin you want. Because there's no God I can do what I want. And that's the essence. Do you think homosexuality is a sin? Oh, absolutely, because the Bible tells me so. But also, lying is, is a sin, theft is a sin, blasphemy, adultery, fornication, even like looking with lust. Did you know that's a sin? Have you done that before? Oh, absolutely. That's called adultery of the heart. So you don't have to be married. Uh, to commit adultery of the heart, all you gotta do is look with lust, right? And have you lied before, do you think? Yeah. So that's that's a sin to it. The Bible says all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Have you ever stolen anything before? Yeah. Yeah, so you're a lying thief and an adultered heart. And one more, this is, this is really a telling one. Have you ever hated anybody before? Yeah, so you're, according to the Bible, you're a murderer at heart. I'm a murderer Right, right. Yes, you're a murderer at heart. Well, it is because God considers uh, uh, lusting the same as adultery. So if God and God created all these things. Why would He create the feelings of love, lust, hate, and, and then punish us humans for feeling those things? Well, we we rejected God. Like I was telling the the boys, they gave God the finger. Adam and Eve did, and we inherited that sin. That's our sin nature. So we naturally sin. two people long ago rejected God, all of humanity was punished. Exactly. That's that's. That's theology 101. That's, That's Christian. The well, yeah, if for somebody that loves their sin, yeah, it's kind of because the Bible Not that says I love that my sin it just seems kind of like that seems counterintuitive. Okay, well, what about really let me ask you this? Would he try and yeah. maybe try and help them and try to move them out of these sinful states instead of punishing people for eternity. Oh, that's what the gospel, that's why we're here. That's what he does. He moves them out of their sinful state through Jesus Christ by saving them from their sins. But let me ask you this. I think this is a really key, important question. Is uh, uh, So what sin or sins would you have to give up to bow the knee to Jesus Christ and worship him forever right now? What, 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 would, what things come to mind? What things come to mind? Yeah, that you're currently involved in sins like uh, pornography, fornication, whatever, would it be lying, theft? What, what, what kind of things do you think you're involved in that would displease God? Do you think? I'm sure I lie every now and again. I really uh -huh. try not to, uh -huh. but like yeah. sometimes I tell little white lies. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess I smoke weed. Uh -huh, That's yeah. probably a big pharmacia. One. Huh? Yeah, it's called pharmacia. So it's it's the the word the same word as sorcery in the Bible. So all, all religions uh, that are all pagan religions, uh, well, I should say all, most of pa pagan religions around the world involve pharmacia or the use of sorcery through drugs. Native Americans, peyote, mescaline, uh, in South America, they have a whole bunch of different drugs that they use, uh, cocaine type of things, all those derivatives. So that, that all that uh, pharmacia is of the devil. And so it's 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 going to harm you. It's gonna it's going to kill you eventually. So yeah. What makes God right and the devil wrong? Just because he says so. And and, we, it, and it's written the things that are. Uh, so if I were to say that you're wrong and you don't get a chance to say anything back, does that mean that I'm right? No, thing no, it doesn't. Because your source. The wrong. If the devil didn't have a word back. And, I, and maybe I forgot, or maybe you didn't tell me. What is what's your source of truth? What's my source of truth? I would say. Try not to step on people, sir. It's kind of rude. Um, but, yeah, so what's your source of truth? Uh, what I see, feel, and... Okay, yeah. Oh, that's right. You yeah. do, so what you observe. Yeah. So you, so everything you've learned, you uh, observe. Yeah. And, and And so... We didn't, you just observe like math, you know, math because you observe. Yeah. It's so like saw somebody doing math. Oh, oh okay. And I understand math, right? Yeah. Nobody taught you. I mean, someone taught me. I, mean, yeah. like I, I was taught these things as well. Yeah. 
like science, yeah, like, like uh, I go to school and I learned all those things yeah. from the teacher. Like uh, which I guess I, I do agree that there is. I know that there's a term for it where you believe what you were taught. And sometimes you don't question like why is two plus two two? Mm -hmm. two yeah, plus yeah. Two four, because yeah. that's just the way it is. When yeah, yeah. in reality it could not be that way. Yeah. I'm not saying that there. Are, I don't. I don't not believe in God. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, maybe we could. Uh, Oh. You don't mind? She's trying to drown this out. Say, so suppression of free speech, which is a sin too, <laughs> but not as grievous a sin as lying and adultery and fornication and, and uh, homosexuality and all that. So, so uh, let's see what was I going to say. I was going to ask you. Um, so, uh, like, two plus two is that always four? I would say, I mean, like it's kind of arbitrary because it's kind of, it's an abstract idea. Uh, do like you think? was human made. It's not, uh, it's not yeah. out there that, you know, we assign meaning to the words too. And we assign meaning to the word plus and yeah, the yeah. word for. Yeah. Someone else in a different culture or someone else in a different place could right. they have different words for it. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, you know, in Spanish, dos, dos yeah. y dos eh, es cuatro. Yeah. It's igual a cuatro. It's two and two and two is four. Yeah. So they're Spanish. So same concept. You have same you concept. have two apples and two apples, and you move them together. Doesn't does matter, matter if you're, you're Ukrainian or you're Japanese. Now you have this many. You know, yeah. you have uh, go. I think it is in in each Nissan go. You have four. Four in Japanese is four. I learned a little bit because I took uh, Doshinkan karate when I was really young, and uh, so I remember I can still count a little bit in, yeah. in Japanese. It's kind of cool, but mainly focused on Spanish. So anyway, but it's the same thing. So so God owns logic. It's a it's a uh, in, immaterial thing. So you, yeah. do you believe in logic? I would say I do, yeah. Yeah, but you can't see it. You can't, can't observe it. it. Yeah. You can observe the effects of it. Like like me making a statement and you going, hmm. hate. Well, that's kind of hateful, accusing me of hate. And that's hypocritical. See, so that's what you get. You get a lot of hypocrisy and hate coming from the LGBT community. But we're in here in love. Because we don't want them to go to hell, we want them to go to heaven, and that's the most loving thing we can do. How do you think it is from their point of view that you well, guys come down ob there? Obviously, most of them will say that we hate them. Ob obviously, most of them uh, won't like it. So, like, if you go to the zoo and it's feeding time, and uh, the, the the feeder he throws a big steak in the Bengal tiger's cage, uh, you want to go in and grab that from him? No, I would not. No, no, because he's going to growl at you. He may eat like, you. <laughs> right? This is a key part of them. That, yeah. The same way that believing in God is a key part of you. Imagine if you were to go to church, and that every time you go to church, that there's people there, and they're like, "Yo, this is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this." And they had uh, signs, and they oh, and they always talk to you. They would be welcome to come stand on the sidewalk when we come preach to them. They couldn't come inside and disrupt because it's not a public place. That's different. But but um, but yeah. So uh, it's a choice. Homosexuality, trans, all it's all a choice. It's Regardless a choice, of what though. they say, they argue that. But then when you get right down to it, you ask them. Well, if you look at it when in a more biological just... sense, a lot of the time those things come from either different chromosomes or the way the genetic makeup is. Like let's say that you let's say that you're a mom and you have three sons. The further down you go, your sons statistically are more likely to be gay because there's going to be an increased amount of uh -huh. estrogen compared to testosterone uh -huh. inside of them. So do you think like alcoholism is hereditary? Like yes. it's, a, it's, a, it's a disease and not a sin? Yes. Okay, so there's another thing you've been taught wrongly. Because the, the Bible says that drunkards will go to hell. So, the Bible not in her told you those things. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen, I mean, I've seen proof of it otherwise. Proof like, of, I know that my dad was a, my dad was a big alcoholic and he stopped uh, drinking before I was born. Yet, I know I have a very addictive personality from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. And because yeah. of that, I stay away from alcohol. Yeah, and, and my because I have a lot of tendencies for, for sin in my family, uh, and some of them are not uh, alcoholics, but everyone in my family was an alcoholic. My dad and parent, my dad and mom, both died, and they're most likely burning in hell right now uh, because they died in drunkenness and, and fornication and other things like that. But just focusing on the idea of drunkenness. Now, I drank a little bit when I was in my preteens, and I went, like, why would you want to do this to your body? I'm like dizzy, and I'm like, it tastes like this. So I, I didn't do it, praise God. Uh, but I, I think I have a tendency because I, I have a distaste for beer and, and even wine, any of that have you stuff. Done mushrooms? No, no, I never Bring would because, again, it gets back to pharmacy. Yeah. Although I did have some really good, um, what were they, chanterelles the other day? Oh, my. Sautéed in, in olive oil and with a little garlic salt. Oh my, they were great. 
But yeah, to do, you know, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to? Why would you want to bring your your mind into a state of altered consciousness? Different to be drunk. On reality, different perception on things in general, I suppose. Yeah, you want to see things that aren't there, and ha you know, have hallucinations, and maybe no, the, jump out a window thinking you're gonna fly, because that's what suicides happen because people are on drugs and they. I mean, suicides you know, happen because of all things, but. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. drugs isn't the main cause of it. Yeah. It's oftentimes an underlying issue that's either going on in their lives, a systematic problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. or sometimes it's just mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's still murder, regardless of how you you cut it, and it's still they'll end up in hell. And so we we come to bring the hope of Jesus Christ. So because a person's suffering out in reality, and they choose to try and end that suffering, they're going to go to hell and suffer even more. Yeah, yeah, because the Bible says that murderers will not inherit the kingdom of God; they will go to hell. And suicide is murder. It's, it's, it's self murder. I mean, it's pretty uh, pretty evident. How you doing today? So yeah, it's self murder. And, and you probably don't buy that or believe it because your source of truth is not God or the Bible, right? No, it's that, different. I didn't yeah, it's different. The Bible. Yeah. So yeah, you're sure. you just observe this. So you you observe that it's that it that uh, it's a problem and it's not a sin, right? Is that, yeah, would that I be fair to say? Yeah, I would see it's more, yeah. maybe not a problem, but yeah. I, I guess I guess a problem yeah. is a way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So what about if a, if a, a pedophile observes that he likes children, he likes having sex with children? Is his observation wrong? Can you say he's wrong? I would say he's wrong because that harms others. And why is harming ro others wrong, in your opinion? Why I mean, in my opinion, others? pedophiles, according to the Bible, should be put to death. They should be executed, you know, if they're guilty. Yeah. Uh, and and, uh, and then it's a sin. Um, and then harming people is wrong too, yeah. according to the Bible. But I think I mean I just believe harming p other people is wrong just on a fundamental level, and I don't really need a reason why. You know, it's it's wrong because it's wrong. It's wrong because it's yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. But other people, uh, other people have opinions that are different than yours. Yeah. And other people actually eat people in the world today. They have they, they cannibalize people. You know, and so. Uh, Do you think that's wrong? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's so that's what would you murder. Say Christians in the past who ate other people, like the there they, were, they didn't exist. Would. Christians never ate people. Christians never murdered anybody. What about the They're fake. Well, that's Catholic. They're not Christian. Catholic Don't is they not still Christian. In the same God, though. No, no, it's different. Okay. And Catholic's a wholly different, real, totally. I almost said wholly different religion. W h o l l y, wholly different religion. And yeah. It's unholy. So the Pope <laughs> thinks he's God on Earth, and I mean, there's so many problems with it. But yet, it's and that's that's I grew up Catholic, so I, I rejected that in my in my early probably preteens, and uh, and I still wasn't so a Christian. So you grew up until, Catholic, and then you became yeah. Christian. Yeah, 34, so a little over 30 Isn't years ago. Doesn't that create doubts in your mind that What's, maybe Christianity is also not the right religion, that there could be a different one? No, no. Catholicism and, wasn't the right one. Yeah, uh, and and part of it is is uh, I mean a big part of it is the new birth. So I was born again in 1994, and so I had a whole new life, a whole new perspective of, of stuff. And so all of a sudden I looked around and went, oh, what I'm doing is wrong. So now God in the in the form of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit is now living inside of me, not physically, because he's not physical. He's yeah. a spirit. He's yeah. living inside of me, guiding me. Go, don't look at that woman in the yoga pants or whatever. Don't don't steal this or whatever. And I go, oh, yeah, okay. So so it's a whole change of mind. And that's, well, I, I heard the gospel preach. You know, the gospel there. Uh, and I heard about heaven and hell. There's a, there's a heaven that's wonderful. There's a hell that's horrible. Pretty basic stuff. And, and how, it, so how would someone well, get into heaven? Or what's hell? that? How would someone get into heaven? Or well, hell? it's pretty simple in, in a sense. In theory, is repent, hate your sin, turn from your sin, and then trust in Jesus to save you from your sin. I mean, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. But Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Was suffered to die on that cross for our sins, and he was buried and rose again on the third day. That's what we celebrate Easter. So that's yeah. the basic gospel. I mean, there's a lot more to it, but just the simple to give you a short, simple answer. So the that, idea is to just is to reject the sins and to believe yeah, in Jesus Christ. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, okay. hate your sin, even not just reject it, but hate it. Like, oh, but isn't oh. hate in itself a sin? No, not hate, because God hates. God hates the worker of iniquity. I was actually his enemy before I came to Christ. That sounds maybe a little weird, but we're all enemies of God. It says through wicked works in our mind, and we suppress the truth. So everybody, everybody believes in a God, including you, the God of the Bible. You believe in, in the God of the Bible. If you read Romans 1, 
uh, you'll, you'll go, wait a minute, oh, but that's what it says. It said they, they, they suppress the truth, even though it's been revealed to them, they know it's true, but they love their sin. And so that's why I asked you earlier, what sin yeah. uh, do you, would you have to give up? What's that What's that? That big juicy steak that the Bengal tiger has that they don't want to give up? Right? So you here it's... why I'm not a Christian? What's that? Just me why I don't believe in God. Well, well, yeah, that's kind of along the same lines because that's the reason people don't become Christian because they love their sin. Yeah. And that's why you have to hate your sin, I give up your sin. I would say for me it's a sin. I would think that it's... I don't know, I think it's a bit deeper than that. It's kind of like the way the way the things operate and the way it is and the fact that, that there is a heaven and hell and it's so arbitrary and so rigid that that seems, that seems like it doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. that I don't think the world works that way. Yeah. Because I feel like there's so many things out there that contradict that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, let's say, let's, let's go on with the homosexuality, that it is a sin. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that humans rejected God with Adam and Eve, and that's why we have free will, and why we're able to commit sins now. Uh, yeah. What about what about all these other animals out in the, out there? They never rejected God, yet they still commit all these other sins. Well, they won't go to hell, and they don't have, they're different. Uh, and you may believe this different, but humans and animals are different creatures. Animals don't have a soul. They're not going to be culpable toward God. They aren't going to be guilty of sin. Because Because uh, like, that Bengal tiger, when he's out in the wild, he just sees a, uh, an antelope or a gazelle and goes, hmm, lunch, oh, and goes, kills him. Is that wrong? No. But some animal rights activists would say that's wrong. But that's that's just what they do. It's not right or wrong. Animals have no morals. And so, uh, you know, we there's some training. Like, like, I kind of doubt that my dogs would would eat me if I collapsed on the floor and they were really hungry. I don't think they would. But it is a possibility that they would. But it wouldn't be wrong for them if they did because they don't have any moral. They're just going, oh, there's some meat. Now, there is some training. Have, they don't have ability to think deeper than there's just meat there. Uh, yeah, not not just the thinking process, but the moral compass inside. They don't so have it. They just go hungry. you and someone else that they wouldn't, dif like, know that they wouldn't feel anything different. No. Let's say that you tell your dogs to sit and they sit, and someone else tells your dogs to sit when they sit. Oh, uh, no, that's different. That's training. Okay. Yeah, okay, well, come have a conversation. Love to talk to you if you're willing. Uh, but, um, so, so uh, yeah, you're talking about commands. So, so everything is just trained. Yeah, if they're trained really good, okay. and well, I say sit, say... and they go, and somebody else comes yeah. by and they sit, they, they might do that if you're tra they're trained really trained. well enough. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. And, But you can train a dog, and I, I don't know the specific, but you but can train emotions, it. emotions, though? Do you think that animals feel emotions? Um, yeah, I think they do in a sense. Yeah, they feel fear and they they feel love and they feel uh, sadness. I think, uh, and I've seen that. You and know, how do they differentiate from morals? Let's say you have two yeah. separate dogs. One is going to attack somebody. One does not. Is that pure training, or is that something that the dog truly believes? Uh, it's a little bit of training okay. and a little bit of nature, like pit bulls and, and like uh, you know they're they're fighting dogs and and like the German Shepherd there. That's a guard dog, and uh, you know I'm. I'm leery of both, unless I know the dog. Like, a, uh, I just, at a friend's house, uh, I went by to get some gospel tracks, and, and their dog, their big bull, pit bull came out, weighs about 110 pounds, came out on the porch, and I'm like, oh, and she came over and, and licked me and, and gave me a little kisses on the hand, and I'm like going, okay, because I didn't think she liked me, because I'd been over there before, and she was like, yeah. and so I was like, oh, no, and our, I have Labradors, and so they're, like, yeah. It's hard to find a mean Labrador. I mean, they're like, where's the Labrador. biscuits, you know? I mean, like, that's yeah. why they're so popular. Uh, but they're unfortunately, people, for whatever reason, yeah. being macho or whatever, uh, or even protection, have pit bulls. And, uh, yeah, anyway, could get off on that tangent. But, but yeah, some of it's nature. Cause it, and they've been bred for the pit bulls. They throw them in a, in a pit with a bull, and it's a big game to see, you know, a big fight. And then yeah. they fight each other. So what what are morals to you? Well, morals are, are uh, just what's right and wrong, and you and, and you have morals, but you don't have the same morals as me, obviously. No, yeah. yeah, you'd say homosexuality is okay, right? You'd yeah. say that, it, but you you may now I, I don't know about you, but you may make the differentiation for whatever reason that like like pedophilia is is wrong. Would you say that's wrong? I'd say it's definitely and wrong. And bestiality is wrong? I'd like, say that's wrong. Yeah, yeah. Wrong. But but why what by what standard would you say that? Like why would you say it's wrong? I mean I I believe it's wrong and not only wrong but punishable by death. 
I according say, to God. I mean, I would say it's wrong, like I said before, because it harms others in that yeah. it puts someone else in a state that they don't want to be in and that you're forcing yeah. something onto somebody yeah. which that they don't want. And that takes away their free will, which I believe is wrong. Yeah, and, and, and then going back again, circling back around to why is harming people wrong? Why, why is that wrong? <laughs> why is that? I think it's on a fundamental level, it's just wrong. What's that? I think on a fundamental level, it is wrong. Yeah, yeah I'm just asking why. Free will. Because, like, um, when we don't have free will, that's another deception. Uh, that's a, kind of a whole other topic. But just to say that that you're a slave to your sin, and I'm a slave to Jesus Christ. So well, I think the fact that I can reject my sins means I have free will. Well, God has to give you the ability to reject your, your sins. Like, I can't I can't make you a Christian just by uh, talking to you. Because if I could talk you into it, some evolutionist, atheist, God-hating person could come talk you out of it. Yeah. But when God changes you, you don't go back. Like, I, it, when somebody says, well, I used to be a Christian, but now I'm a lesbian. Or I used to be a Christian, now I'm a whatever, agnostic or atheist. Well, they never were a Christian. So when God does something, he does it permanently. And, and so that's what's uh, really amazing. It's re amazing and marvelous that he does it permanently. And you know, 35 years ago, or a little over 30 years ago, uh, January 22, 22nd, 1994, so that's when I was saved and changed. And so, um, so God does it permanently. But, but like if you were, if you were a, like a fundamentalist atheist, uh, if you really believe everything that they say, uh, if you believe everything, then you would, you'd have to go with Darwin's uh, survival of the fittest. You're younger and stronger than me. Why not beat me up and take my wallet? Why not, you know, pummel me? To, but but yeah, but, but according to uh, uh, survival of the fittest, if you're bigger and stronger, like that Bengal, gonna go get that gazelle and have them for lunch. So you think what? survival of the fittest means that the strongest will always pick on the weak? Yes, yes. They don't have you don't have Bengal tigers out there uh, trying to trying to find uh, gazelles that are that are uh, wounded and go take them back to their den and patch them up and feed them and water and give them water and stuff like that. No, no they go. Mm, that one's wounded. That one's an easy. Let's get that one. Now, now, uh, in our uh, in our society, most of the time, most of the time we care for disabled people. You know, I just saw somebody go by in a wheelchair earlier. Well, there's, you know, like see that that woman over there is a wheelchair. Survival of the fittest would say, Let's get rid of her. That was Hitler's thing because he he was an evolutionist, learned a lot from Darwin and Nietzsche. That's where he got his his education from in that sense of morality. That Jews Jews were not as evolved. Get rid of them. Gypsies, homosexuals, um, even Christians, but the Jews were the main thing for Hitler. Get rid of yeah. them because they're subhuman, right? They're subhuman, and then they got into—I don't know if you studied uh, Hitler and the Holocaust. They got down to measuring ear size and yeah, jaw got, shape like, and eyes. They go, ah, eh, no, they're not going to make it. They're a, too big of eyes. Kinda. So you think that because um, someone used this theory of evolution to promote the hateful message that it disproves the theory of evolution or makes that bad? No, it doesn't prove it. It just shows that that's or where they got their... It. It, that's it, what I mean. Well, not disprove it. It just shows that 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 uh, that it's wrong. Yeah. Because because it's it's obvious that many people believe in it. That's true. But the but evolution isn't true. I mean, it's a, it's a one of the biggest lies ever foisted on um, on humanity. Why do you think evolution isn't true? Well, I mean, just on a basic level, like, could you name um, a change of kind, like from a cat to a dog or a, a fish to a lizard? Well, that doesn't do you, happen because evolution doesn't work that way. Well, that's what Darwin believed. He believed that was that no, was evolution. It's it's a missing link. Like he was looking for that link between the uh, animals, I, the apes, and the humans. Never found it, right? So can you name one? I mean, yeah, you can look at the fact that whales, they they started out as fish, they evolved, and they came out onto land as, as like, aquatic frog, not like, like salamanders, that's the word. Like, and, so, but and then it, they came back into the ocean, and if you look at a whale skeleton, you can see when they still have the leg bones. Uh, so or you can look at our, you can look at the human, like, the human body, we still have a tailbone. Yeah. Or you could look at... Yeah, it's called the coccyx vertebrae, and it's uh, it's for, um, it helps with, uh, like, the nerves for... I'm trying to remember. I, I think it has, has to do with the it's, digestive yeah, process. Use so, so that it, it actually started out as a bone for the tail. Well, and how did you know that? Did you did you experience or observe that? Like you said, because you say you learn by experience, right? I or did somebody did somebody maybe. learn that? Did, yeah, did you I learn mean, that there somewhere? Is, there's, there's skeletons out there. You can use flies. 
Yeah. You can use like carbon dating, you can use genome mapping. There's ways where you can take a bone, see how old it is, mm, yeah. and then see how it correlates to another skeleton and see the uh, process as it goes through. Yeah, and, and uh, the evolutionists will have one answer and Christians will have another yeah. answer because they'll go, hmm, I think this one's 30 million years old, so we'll use this dating method. Uh, mm, my something's wrong here. <laughs> or we believe, we believe this one's 10 million years old, so we use this method. Or whatever. <laughs> That's what they do. So, and like, like, you know, what do you, what do you think about like, uh, like, uh, tissue in, in, um, uh, in dinosaur bones that they found in fossils? Well, how do you, how do you account for that? It's like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, you like non-fossilized, it's still, it's still like fleshly. How do you account for that? I mean... I don't think that's been. I don't think that's been found yet. If it has, uh, yeah, and, and again, I don't. I don't know how. Yeah, it, like, yeah, it's just an been example. But, camper, but I don't believe that. I think dinosaurs were so old that there'd be no uh, flesh left. Yeah, they were all and, deteriorated. And I, and I assume that you believe that that animals, uh, that dinosaurs and men were on the earth at the same time, right? I don't think they were. You think they like we evolved from dinosaurs or whatever? But no, the Bible says they were there together. I you believe know, that there were dinosaurs and then there was a mass extinction. And certain small mammals survived. One of those being, you know, one of the one of the precursors to, to primates, yeah. which then go to Homo erectus, and then uh, yeah. and then Homo sapiens. Yeah. And so, have you heard of the Noahic flood? Familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God killed everyone but eight people on the earth. What a, yeah. a flood! Most of the animals. So what you see is billions of dead things buried in rock layers, laid down by water all over the earth. Is one way to look, a short way to look at it, and so what you see is is you see all this mass of of, uh, of fossils and yeah animals eating one another fossilized. Like something's wrong with the picture. Wait a minute, how did that work? Did it take them 60 million years to eat that that, or did well, something else happen? Catastrophe. Yeah, yeah, like a meteor. Yeah, and or so a volcanic eruption. But I mean, if you just if you just if you use a little observation, if you if you've seen things rot, you know that they don't just freeze for thirty million years. Things come and pick them. Other scavengers come and pick the bones, yeah. and they take them away. And they're not you're not going to find a, a full fish. No, I mean, uh, that's all together. You're not going to find a full salamander or whatever. You could. unless you had like a huge deluge and things were buried like right away, right? Well, that's what like you, I mean, like what yeah. the Bible says. So the Bible says that the flood happened and things were buried right away. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Big deluge. The fountains of the earth broke up, and it's a—I mean, it's a horrifying thing to think. And you know, and then the, the spiritual application is there that that Noah was there 120 years building the ark, preaching to the people. And how many came in? Eight. Yeah, seven. seven so yeah, plus Noah. seven. Okay. Yeah, plus Noah. So eight. That's all. They all said, "If you got." Yeah, or F you Noah and F you God. They they flipped God off, all that, gave him the finger. And the door was open to the ark, right? They're they're building it. Now you repent, repent, repent. It wasn't like a five minute message on the street. Long time. But people the Bible says that there was horrible wickedness on the earth at all it's so, everything that man thought of was evil. I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? I had what was I gonna say? I lost my train of thought. You mentioned earlier that um, that you became Christian when God spoke to you, right? Well, not as not in like, a, an audible way, but but through a like, preacher. Through a pre yeah, yeah like he you, said you're gonna go to hell in your sins and the, like talked about sins I went, Oh, that's me. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah. So that's how he spoke to me through a preacher, just okay. like just like God speaks to you through me, and and I pray I that see. I'm saying okay. things accurately and I'm making sense. I understand. I may not say yeah. everything that I mean to say. Yeah. I may not say it right, but you have to correct me. He said, did you mean that? I'm, oh, sorry. No, I'm you know whatever, whatever. I meant to say anthropomorphism or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, that's that's okay, how it works. Okay. So God doesn't speak audibly. If yeah, somebody no, tells I you that, that. Well, I heard from God the other day. Somebody. What's that? Spoke, like he spoke through yeah, somebody. Yeah, and, and through the Bible. And is that kind of what you hope to do down here is have God speak through you to, to people around here? Yeah, speak to people through us, through signs, through literature, tracks. Do you think Noah, that God spoke through Noah? Absolutely, yeah. And, and God, uh, the people rejected the message. And so, um, yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy for 120 years. And, uh, uh, you know, 
Jeremiah, a similar type of thing. He, he was known as a weeping prophet. He didn't have much fruit. He didn't see much repentance. And then you got Jonah, if you know the, the, the account of Jonah, where he was swallowed by a large fish running away from God. He didn't want the people of Nineveh to repent. They yeah. were like a wicked, barbaric society. And he, he didn't want them to repent. And God so, said, go preach to Nineveh. And all he said was, 40 days and judgment. That's all I he have said. I a quick question about the Oh, sure, here. sure, yeah. So let's say that you are gay, right? Uh -huh. And that if you want to have a child, you need to have two people of opposite sex. How could how could a gay person have a fetus that they then abort? Well, I'm just saying this. Th what this is is a hundred. Now, now you may find an exception. You may know somebody. I'm not saying it's absolute, but so far what I've uh, experienced is that a uh, hundred percent of the people I've talked to that are not only just LGBT, uh, but they're LGBT friendly. In other words, they may be heterosexual. Uh, and they may not even be married, but they they uh, are they say yeah homosexuality is good. They're all 100% uh, for uh, baby murder, sacrifice, child sacrifice. So that's what it is. What's, what's, the, what's your what's opinion the correlation on correlation there? I'm really confused on how being gay leads to leads the children dying. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that they directly uh, do that. Oh, so you read it? Good. That's good. You read it. Oh well, you're you ashamed of Jesus. You're ashamed of God, and uh, I mean, shouldn't be works. littering. I'm Jewish. Well, you know, you can still be saved from hell. We're out here for everybody. God, God is willing to save everyone. It's willing to repent. Yeah, and say so, so. Not all Israel will be saved. You know that there's going to be a remnant that God's going to save. They're the Jewish people are the chosen people. But if we are grafted, you no, know, like I'm a Gentile by by uh, by religion and by. Um, uh, by lineage, yeah. but he grafted me in like just like you graft a you know a, a, a plum onto a peach tree. Yeah. Anyway, so here, could you could you go back to that? Oh yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. Confused. Sorry. No, that's okay. So, so how is that? What's the correlation there? Well, um, it's because it's a it's a root of sin that's so deep that uh, and I and I don't know all of the reasons for it, but it's just my experience that everyone that's that's LGBT. Uh, uh, and LGBT friendly has been 100% for the killing of children in the womb. Some will say, well, I, I think, you know, maybe three months is, that's too much, you know, or maybe two months is too much, but yeah, you should be able to be kill a baby. And, um, uh, but, but, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, two lesbians can't make a baby. Two homosexual guys can't make a baby. Uh, and, and so, um, but it's really weird, but like some, a trans woman and a trans man, I don't know if they ever get married, but if they ever have sex, and I don't even know if that works, if they've had like surgeries, it gets really weird. But say they just identify, like a man identifies as a woman and vice versa, and they and they get together, they could have a baby if they're fertile, right? You know, but I would believe, I'd actually believe if they just decide, you know, I don't think I'm gonna do this, they'd kill the baby. I'm, I'm like really certain. And okay. So, but, but they're just, they're for that, that evil. And if you if you pull Ashland, I'd say they're probably Why ninety five. Would you bring that on to them then? That you haven't really, I mean, you haven't asked every single person yeah, yeah. part of the LgBT community, but you right, yeah, I get you it. Assume that they're all for this one thing. Well, yeah, and that's what that's what. Isn't that kind of the same thing that they do towards you guys with Christianity, where they assume, you know, right off the bat that you guys are Christians, so that you must be for all these things, even though you. Yeah, are. they do that. Yeah, they yeah you do that, and and I'm like and my my. Um, caveat or my exception that is like I haven't met everybody but it's only like a you know surveys work That's they go they go they, yeah and you try and do your best I try and ask the right questions because I in Eugene we were at Eugene Pride a couple years and I, I thought I thought a couple years ago I thought I found one a pro-life well not pro-life an abolitionist uh, uh, LGBT person. She wasn't gay herself, but her, her daughter was. She was there for her daughter. And I asked her, she says, yeah, I'm against abortion. I go, wow, okay, really? And, and, and end up uh, asking her, like, is it in all cases? And I remember what she says, well, yeah, I'm, I'm not really, I'm kind of out on that. And, I'm like, uh, and then she took off, like, didn't quite get a, a, a definite answer. But she was probably pro-life. So do you know what the difference between pro-life and abolitionist is? I don't. I know well, pro-life. So, like, if you think of slavery, is. there were people back in the 1800s that said, you know, we don't like slavery, but, you know, 
you know, uh, if you don't like slavery, don't have a slave. So was, was abolitionist more kind of like completely outright gone? Yes, and then yes, that's like, it. I'm against it, but not fully. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, you understand it. And that's the same thing with abortion. And that's why we use slavery and abortion in, the, in that way to compare the two. Because there were people back in the day who say, well, you know, slavery's bad. It's bad. Um, and so what we want to do is um, we want to start paying the slaves. And uh, it's okay to still rape, rape them. Um, and, and when to bring them over on ships, don't make it so crowded. Give them some room and, and make it cleaner. And that's the way they've done, like, pro-life laws have been, well, you can only murder a baby if it doesn't, if it doesn't have a heartbeat. And, I mean, there's a whole sorts of problems with that. Like, who, who detects the heartbeat? You a know? Doctor? No? Abortionist. Okay. Because they're not a doctor. They're, they're, a, they're an assassin. Actually, uh, they're to murder a baby. That's what they do. Do you know the so, process towards becoming an abortionist? Because I'm pretty sure it involves, it involves becoming a doctor and learning about the human yeah, body. You, yeah, I, I do believe you have to have a PhD to, to do that. I think legally you, you have to... You have to be a surgeon. Yeah, you have to know how to do that. There's quite a lot of education that goes into Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And so that's how they can, that's how they can understand how to, most of that time, not harm the woman. Reach in there with their, their, uh, their, their tools. Uh, and then rip the baby apart, and they know to pull the baby out, put legs, arms, crush the skull, bring the, the head out, the body, and, and then count, make sure all they got all the pieces. And, I think oftentimes when they do an abortion, they don't have all those body pieces yet. And that oftentimes the fetus is, I mean, it's small. It's no yeah, it's yeah. Like a popcorn kernel. And that, that happens too, yeah. And, and actually, uh, nowadays, since Roe v. Wade was now overturned, you know, it's actually made it worse for in Oregon because it didn't affect Oregon, except that it made it worse because it's still it's still legal to murder a baby up to birth in Oregon. Did you know that? I don't believe it's up to birth. Yeah, go well. Don't take my word for it. Go look but, it up. Yeah. But yeah. Because we've seen them at the at the kill mill up in Portland. Uh, it was uh, it was called Lovejoy. What an odd name for a murder mill, an abortion mill. But um, <clears throat> and now it closed down after some friends of ours up there were ministering there for like seven years at that mill bringing signs and preaching and stuff and, but then they about five months later they opened another one called Lilith just downtown and Lilith is a, a Jewish demon uh, a, a legendary Jew, Jew, demon name Lilith whoa how appropriate so but anyway uh, there we saw people like uh, wheeling in women that are like the babies like the stomach's like a basketball and then they wheel them out and they're like uh, they they rip that baby out. So it's not it, it, to be fair. It's not all the time, but it's yeah. legal. It's or it's it's a better way to say it. It's allowed. They allow it, just like they did slavery. It was unconstitutional, but they, they allowed it. So, but yeah, that's. But you, what do you think about? Uh, you think uh, abortion well, should I be legal? Abortion, I think abortion should be legal. Uh -huh. I think up until a certain point. Yeah, so when do you think it's, it's okay to kill a baby in the womb? What, what I don't time? Feel like I have enough knowledge to really speak on that too much. Uh, so like if, if you were the construction guy on, you know, you know when they implode buildings, like they blow them up and then the building just falls in, tie itself and, and it, yeah. you know, some dust goes up, but not too much debris, it just goes inside of itself because yeah. the way they plant the charges around the base and, and up yeah. the top. So the guy's ready to blow it up and then one of the workers come by and they go, ah, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, we just saw Mrs. Thompson, and and uh, somebody said she, they saw her going down in into the basement, into her old office to get some. They think they went to get some photos or something like that, some family stuff, and and so we think she's in there. Mr. Johnson, well, we got to blow this thing up at one o'clock in 20 minutes, or we lose the contract, seven million dollar contract. We're going to lose this if we don't blow it up. We're going to blow it up. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Well, they so, do so they wouldn't do it, right? You wouldn't do it, would you? If you were Mr. Johnson, you so wouldn't push that button. Between a fetus and a, and a born, grown-up human. What's that now? So I think there's a difference between a fetus and a born, grown-up human. Oh yeah, like, yeah. In my mind, it's yeah. kind of the idea. Of, let's say you have you have eggs, flour, milk, sugar. You have all the ingredients, and then you also have a fully made cake. Those are two different things. Yet one of those can lead to the other, but one is not the other. Well, yeah, and what you're talking about is more like the sperm and the egg. Neither of those are humans. They don't have a separate book of DNA. Once they they're join not. In, yeah, once they join in, so they're alive. Mix up all the ingredients into a batter. They're still very different. You still have to uh, cook the batter. You still no, have to you heat still. It up. You have to, you have to I, make I think, it. I think that analogy uh, well, works so with the, the cake. Batter, and then you don't have a, you spill the batter, that's like, oh, that's a bummer, but it wasn't the cake. 
Uh, yeah, that, that's a, that's kind of stretching, but I see what you're saying, though. But but yeah, the um, what, when you when you mix up the batter, now it's it has all the ingredients. It has the DNA. It has it has the flour and the sugar, the whatever. You, cake, and, and it's not a cake. But it's, it's a cake. It's just an unbaked cake, right? Yeah. So the I baby is alive at fertilization, not even implantation, because some birth control methods are what they call abortifacients. In other words, they they kill the baby, they starve the baby, so it can't implant. And now it just falls off and dies. And so it's very, very small. It's in the, the zygote stage, I believe, is really small. It's a few cells. But it's still life. So people say, well, it's not alive. Well, only only, uh, only live things grow, right? The, that that concrete's not going to grow. It's, you know, this this grass glass is not going to grow. You know? Anyway, I mean, there are things that you, like, you, they grow crystals, silicon crystals for for computers but you know you're putting a lot of stuff into that but things just don't grow that are that are in reality yeah. so anyway uh getting not getting up trying not to get off the tangent on that but um that's the idea so so if you don't know you wouldn't push that button right so you don't know when it's a baby in the womb so why would you kill if you don't know because and here's the here's the the, the i think that you need to really grab a hold of is you'll be culpable not only, not just if you kill that baby, if you are the abortionist or the mother, the mother would be guilty too, taking that baby to death at the death camp, at the abortion mill. But if you agree and say, yes, that's good, now you're guilty. Just in the same way that if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. Or if you look at somebody with lust, you've committed adultery in, in the heart. So if some young person told me a few years ago, they thought, you know, that sounds like a hate cr or a, um, a thought crime. And I thought, sounds kind of odd. And I thought, I'll take that. That's a good... That's a good analogy, a hate crime, because God knows our minds. He knows every sin that you've done all your life. And that's a terrifying thing. My name's John, by the way. I'm Florian. What is it? Florian. Floria? Florian. Okay. Florian? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that like Italian or something? Uh, or? It's German. German, well, it's okay. Also, it's also popular in Italy. Oh, okay. It's okay. like Italy, Germany, Okay, Yeah, because my, my lineage is German and Scottish mostly, so. Oh, okay. But anyway, yeah. Cool. yeah. So, yeah, that's the idea. And so, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get yeah, well, thanks. I appreciate nice it. Talking. I'm yeah. This back to you. Okay. Well, just has some good information, especially on on the topic of abortion, good homosexuality. Yeah. But yeah, I appreciate you taking the time and being being civil, not hating on me. You know, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, good All right. Take care now. How you doing today? Repent and believe the gospel.